Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Beth and I am the bookworm trait. So today I am bringing you a tag created by Luli Hernandez and this is the tarot book tag. This is a new tag, it hasn't been around very long, like maybe a week. <laughs> and I'm really excited to do this because I recently got a new pack of tarot cards that are absolutely beautiful. So I'm excited to show you guys those as well. Now, whilst each card is very nuanced in the information that it is portraying, Luli has gone with the basic definitions of what these cards mean. So the first card we have is the Fool. And the prompt for this card is to pick a book with nostalgic feelings. I will leave the link to where I got these cards from. I don't remember off the top of my head what they are called. I want to say Mystic Monday's Modern Mystic but we don't know if that's correct or not. So for this card I have gone with a very old book and this is a collection of A.A. A. Milne poetry. This book actually belonged to my mum um, and then me. It was printed in the 60s and sadly is not in pristine condition. But I have very fond memories of this book. I love A.A. A. Milne's poetry. I don't know what this is actually called, this collection, when we were very young. I have really fond memories of reading this as a child with my mum, not being allowed to touch it because of how old it was. We actually had three very old antique books and I wasn't allowed to touch any of them and I was obsessed with them. Um, but this book just has a really, really special place in my heart and I hope one day to be able to pass this down to my own children. I might have to get it like rebound because it is pr getting pretty damaged. Obviously a lot of love for this book. The second card we have is The Magician and for this card I need to pick a book with a main character that is very goal orientated. Goal oriented. I don't know how you say that. And so for this prompt I have gone with Nevernight with Mia Kaveri being our goal orientated character. If you've read this series then obviously you will know that Mia is incredibly focused on achieving her goals almost to the detriment of everything else in the book. This is one of my favourite book series of all time. I absolutely love this. Nevernight follows Mia Caveira whose parents were murdered. Her father was some kind of like senator thing. He had a plot to take over the government and sadly his plot was foiled. He was killed, his wife Mia's mother was imprisoned as was her little brother and Mia was set to be murdered but she managed to get away and was taken in by a kindly old assassin. <laughs> Mia wants to join a school for assassins so that she can eventually get revenge on the people who killed her parents. The three books in this series revolve around Mia's revenge plot. I love this book, I think it's absolutely brilliant, well written, it it's five star read for me and I cannot recommend it enough if you haven't already read it because it's pretty popular. Our next card is The Empress and for this I need to pick a book with a strong motherly figure. Now I don't often read books that have a strong motherly figure in them. Most of the books I read there is no parental figures and if there is it tends to be some kind of surrogate father. But luckily there is a strong motherly figure in my current read Kings, Queens and Inbetweens. In this book we follow a girl called Nima who is a lesbian and is coming to terms with what that means to her. This book has a whole host of side characters who are for the most part queer and it is about Nima and some of her friends coming to terms with what their gender and their sexual identities are. Nima's own mother is absent for the majority of this book but she does meet a drag queen called Deirdre and Deirdre takes Nima as well as one other character under her wing and introduces them to the scene. She is a mentor, she is a parental figure, she is a guide, she is amazing and yeah she's a great motherly character in this book. She is a real support system for Nima as well as another character who I can't really go into because it is spoilers. This is a really great book and I would definitely recommend it for younger readers. Personally I found it difficult to connect with the characters because the book did read 
quite young, but I am not the target audience, so I wouldn't knock the book for that. I think it deals with some really interesting topics of identity and belonging, and it's dealt with in a really fun way. So I definitely think this is a brilliant book, and again, I would highly recommend it. <laughs> so our next card is The Lovers. And for this, I need to pick a book with my favourite relationship or couple in it. This was a really, really easy one for me because I tend to actually hate relationships in books. I never feel like they're really done very well, personally. <laughs> so for this, I went for Muse of Nightmares. Now, this probably is my actual favourite book. I prefer this one, Strange Dreamer. I just, this book is just so perfect. But it breaks my heart. <laughs> but literally every single relationship in this is just perfection. I love every relationship in this book. My absolute favourite, I can't tell you who they are because spoilers, but yeah, just perfect relationships in this. I would say Laszlo and Sarai, who are our main romantic couple, are probably my least favourite. I'll give you a clue, like if you've read this book, the male-male relationship in this book that doesn't come until the very end is my favourite. I think it's literally just revealed in like the last chapter, but I just felt so validated that it happened because I had an inkling that it might happen from the first book and it was just really great to see it on the page and see the character come to understand and accept his identity and accept why he may have acted a certain way with a, another character in the book. Hopefully that's vague enough that if you go into this you won't know what I'm talking about but if you've read the book you'll know what I'm talking about hopefully. I feel like everyone in their aunt already knows what Strange to Dreamer is. It's a very difficult book to describe because it's very character heavy rather than being so plot driven but to give you a kind of brief overview Strange to Dreamer follows a guy called Laszlo Strange who's an orphan. He works in a library and he is obsessed with a city called Weep and Weep is largely believed to be fictional so it's like the lost city of Atlantis in this world. People think it's a bit strange that he's so obsessed with these fairy tales but then one day a group of travellers from Weep come to the library where he works and say that they need help with a problem. Laszlo is able to join them and go to Weep and help with this problem. Very vague but this is beautifully written, it's very whimsical, it has that kind of essence of mythology in there. It's just a really really beautiful book and I especially just love the second one because it just added so much backstory to it. Our next card is Justice and for this I need to pick a book that makes me feel heard or represented. This was very difficult for me to pick a book that really made me feel heard or represented because I don't feel that I've ever really read a book where I felt that way. I am mixed race so my dad is black and my mum is white. I've never read a book where I felt my identity as a mixed race person was truly reflected. I have definitely read books with mixed race characters in them but they're usually a fantasy book or a contemporary book about something not related to their racial identity and it is just kind of mentioned in passing. So for example The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo has mixed race representation in it. Not to the point where you read it and you're like wow I've, I can see myself in this character. To an extent I think to all the boys I've loved before kind of gave me that vibe but I can't really relate to being half Korean because I'm not half Korean. <laughs> I have read one book which did delve into those thoughts and feelings of being a mixed race person who's half black and half white and that book was They Come In All Colours. This book is historical fiction, it's set in the 60s and because of that reason I really struggled with reading it. I typically do not like historical fiction, I just can't connect, I just have no interest in it. So I did actually DNF this book but I did see for the first time representation of myself in a book. This book is about a boy who is basically white passing 
um he's grown up in a mixed neighborhood where there are black people and there are white people and he's always been treated as white because he's very light-skinned he didn't know for a long time that his mum actually was black because she was so fair and he had difficulty understanding what it was like to be a black person he just couldn't connect he then ends up moving i think to new york i'm not sure he ends up moving and he moves to an all-white neighborhood he's very intelligent so he ends up going getting like a scholarship to a prep school and suddenly he begins to understand what it is like to be treated as a black person i believe later on in the book he begins to experience real discrimination based on his skin colour. I believe he gets into some trouble at school that isn't really his fault, but he gets the blame because he is the black kid. I will say for what I did read of this book, I did feel a real connection with the character. I think his name's Huey. In that, I, I feel anyway, as a mixed race person, your identity, um, which community you are supposed to fit in with can be very difficult to understand and it can be very difficult to feel comfortable in yourself and to accept yourself. I could probably do an hour long video talking about my experiences as a mixed race person and my struggles with my identity from being someone who isn't white passing but growing up in an all white environment. But that's not what this video is about so I am not going to do that. <laughs> what I would say is if you are somebody who can get behind historical fiction and you are interested in those kind of messages or you're a mixed race person looking for some representation of yourself in a book where it's not just a passing comment about or people always ask me what I am which is really the only representation I've ever found before then I would definitely recommend this book if you don't like historical fiction then you're probably going to struggle with it in the same way that I did the next card is death and this is a book that has changed me forever so weirdly for this i'm going with another book that i didn't necessarily love and that is noughts and crosses by mallory blackman and this is my original noughts and crosses and it is it's very old it's very stained noughts and crosses is basically like an alternate reality sci-fi kind of book and it is set in a world where the power of the races is reversed so rather than the white race being i'm gonna say the more powerful race it sounds like a horrible thing to say but at the end of the day it is true white people are oppressed reading this as a young girl and again coming back to that idea of belonging this was probably the first book where i really read about black characters who weren't like an ethnicity they weren't reduced to being an ethnicity they weren't reduced to being a stereotype of a character and that was very very powerful for me as a young girl i'm actually getting a bit emotional which i don't know why it was just really powerful to me for me to read about a world where I wouldn't have been so discriminated against because of my skin colour because I would look more like everyone else and I am actually getting real emotional here. It really made me take a hard look at how I looked at myself and the value that I placed on myself because of the colour of my skin. It made me more aware of the discrimination that I had experienced in my life. Yeah, it just, it really resonated with me. I think I was probably 16, 15 when I read this book and I just, I'd never felt heard or understood like I did when I, I read this. I'm gonna stop talking about it now. The next card is The Devil and this is one of my favourite cards because look how stunning that is. And for this I need to pick a book with a character that makes me want to scream because of how frustrating they are. And for this I've gone with Avery from the Thousandth Floor series although if I am honest I probably could have gone with the majority of the characters in here. There's one or two that I really like but most of them are very annoying so the Thousandth Floor series is described as Gossip Girl set in the future and it is definitely that. If you like Gossip Girl and if you like contemporary, YA contemporaries that are all about the rich elite and you want something that's just a little bit different than your standard Gossip Girl-esque book then I would definitely recommend this series 
personally i love this series but i know a lot of people don't it is trashy ya at its finest the thousandth floor is set in i think it is set in new york and it's set in a block of flats or an apartment block tower a ta apartment tower i don't know what they call it in america a block of flats <laughs> um that is a thousand floors high the higher up in the tower that you live the richer you are and so the people that we follow in this book obviously live very very high up but there is some some other characters who live lower down and are poor there's also a lot of diversity in this book as well um i don't think we have any queer rep in here off the top of my head i don't think we have any but we definitely have a diverse group of characters from different ethnic backgrounds avery in particular is painted as this princess she lives on the thousandth floor she is the richest of all her friends she is very beautiful but honestly she is vapid and boring and uh, very dislikable for a reader she is one of the main characters in the book but there are a lot more interesting characters than her there are characters who are very flawed and very troubled and Avery is neither of these she has a questionable romantic plot that goes throughout the three books and that is Avery's main character trait is that she is in love with someone that she shouldn't be in love with and I'm just gonna say it she shouldn't be in love with them because it's fucking gross as much as I dislike Avery I do love this series I would still recommend if you enjoy if you just want something light and enjoyable this is a good book for that the next card is the tower and for this i need to pick a book that destroys a certain stereotype now i wanted to go for something really deep here but i just could not think of anything so instead i've gone for vicious by v.e schwab this is another one of my favorites i read this book in one sitting it's perfection <laughs> so this book follows two best friends victor and eli who figure out how they can get superpowers and go about doing that the reason that i picked this for destroying stereotypes is because to an outsider victor is the villain and eli is the hero based on what they are doing for the world that being said when you read the books and you get into their minds and you see exactly what behaviors these two characters are exhibiting it becomes clear that it is not quite as clear cut as that i love a morally gray character and victor is just beyond that i find his characterization so interesting and the fact that he embraces the fact that he is a villainous character and yet is the hero of the book i think breaks the stereotype of what it means to be a bad character or a villain in a book the next card we have is the star and for this i need to pick a book that is inspirational and for this i have gone with another book from my childhood called a chinese cinderella this book had such a profound impact on my life it started a huge interest in east asian culture history and literature not something i am as interested in now but definitely throughout my teen years that was a, that was a big thing that inspired that hobby it was also the very first book i ever read that made me cry a chinese cinderella is a basically like an autobiography but written in a fictional format for children. And it is about a girl who grew up in China as part of quite a big family. Her mother passed away in childbirth and her father remarried and had a son with his new wife. I think she has three older siblings. She is blamed for her mother's death and her stepmother takes a dislike to her all of her family except for her grandmother basically don't like her and she is very emotionally and at times physically abused by her family it's incredibly heartbreaking to read about and i'm gonna cry again it's incredibly heartbreaking to read about the treatment of this little girl but ultimately it is a story of overcoming obstacles and fulfilling your potential despite the fact that no one else believes in you or wants you to do it or is trying to help you get there yeah it's just her journey is was just incredibly inspirational and incredibly touching to me um i think i was 
13 when I read this book. I remember I actually, we actually did this in an English class and we read an excerpt from the book and I was so touched by it. I went home and told my mum I was going to use my pocket money to buy the book because I needed to read it. So I cannot recommend that book enough. It is amazing it's an amazing amazing book and our final card is the sun and for this i need to pick a book written by an author who i hope will one day become a household name i really couldn't go for anything other than the hazelwood this is one of my favorite books i literally talked about it in my video last week i'll probably talk about it more because i just really love this book it is so good this was melissa albert's debut novel and though I didn't like the sequel as much as I loved this one I feel like she may have had some pressure from her publishers to write a second book in the series it felt very much like it wasn't part of the story and had just been kind of added on at the end or should have been a few chapters at the end of this one. The Hazelwood is a dark whimsical fairy tale that follows a girl called Alice. Alice's grandmother is a writer and she has written a series of fairy tales that have a huge cult presence although the fairy tales are very difficult to track down and very few people have actually read them. Alice and her mother are estranged from her grandmother and they travel around the United States trying to find somewhere to put down roots. But whenever they get comfortable, bad fortune seems to follow, so they are always having to move. After Alice's grandmother passes away, her mother tells her that they can finally settle down and be free, and so they do. They settle down in New York. Her mother ends up married to some rich guy, and Alice is finally starting to be in a position where she can have friends, she can have a job, she can have a life, she can go to, to college, all these things she never thought she would be able to do. However, now that they've settled down, the curse seems to have caught up to them again, and maybe there is more to Alice's grandmother's fairy tales than she was led to believe. I really cannot wait to read the final installment of The Hazelwood, which isn't a continuation of the story. It's a collection of the fairy tales that I talked about in this book. I cannot wait to read them. If I don't have a beautiful hardbound, foiled and sprayed edged edition, I'm gonna kick off. I can't wait to see what she does next. This is just so to my taste that I hope everything that she writes will be this good. And I really want more people to read this book because I just think it is really beautiful. Okay and that is all of the prompts for this video. I want to say thank you to Luli for creating this tag, it was really fun, it really gave me pause for thought with a lot of the questions, they were quite deep which is great. <laughs> um, I hope you guys liked it, if you did give me a thumbs up and let me know. If you've read any of these books or if you have any recommendations for me please let me know in the comments down below and if you want to see more from me then please subscribe to my channel as well. That's all from me. Bye. Bye.